Hey, Alana, how you doing? Hi, oh, good, thanks. Um, so let's jump straight into this. Um, why don't you tell us just about your story and how you got OP and how this all started for you? Yeah, okay. So um, I got osteitis pubis in um, eight, uh, yeah, eight years ago, I think it is now. Um, and, and I was playing, I was training for hockey twice a week, playing hockey um, twice a week, running, cycling 150Ks a week and doing Pilates and anything else that I could possibly find. And then I just, I, I, I never know, I can't pinpoint one point where I went, okay, my groin hurts. I thought, I was originally started going to physio because I th went to step up onto a wall and I thought that, I thought I'd pulled my butt muscle or my hamstring, but of course, of course, because it was the area that it was on, I left it for a month before I went and saw anyone because I didn't want anyone playing in that area. <laughs> so, um, I I spent a lot of time at the physio. Um, she told me to rest for a month, so I rested and I kept having physio um, of just trying to loosen up the adductor. Um, and then she said, "That's when she said, I think you've got osteoarthritis." Went and had all the scans, confirmed I had high inflammation on it, had the cortisone injection. At the same time, I was trying to get pregnant as well. So we always knew that if I got pregnant, then um, some of the, like, then some things may come to a standstill. Um, so I had the cortisone injection, started rehab um, with, like, so that would get me to do cycling on a, um, like the reclined bike seat. I don't even know what that's called, but doing those bits and pieces. Um, I was on a reformer, doing reformer exercises. Everything, Basically everything I tried, I would think I was on a good path and then wouldn't get better. Um, then I fell pregnant. Um, I stopped my rehab for that. Uh, yeah, I, I basically stopped what I had. And, and I thought that my osteitis pubis would flare up while I was pregnant, but actually improved. And I think it's because, like you said, I'm hypermobile. So because I was pregnant, my joints couldn't get high, couldn't move the way that they used to because I had a big bump in the way that was locking me into doing the positions that I wanted to uh, probably best describe. It. Um, and then, yeah, so fast forward eight years, I've had two babies. I had osteitis pubis surgery in December 2016 um, because I thought this is before I'd heard of you. Um, I thought I'd exhausted all my avenues. I'd tried anything that ended in inology or IST. Um, I call it my $20,000 injury because I've spent well and above trying to fix that. Um, but yeah, the surgery made it worse because um, I, had, I had pubic drilling. So they were my pubic bones. And I, I remember saying to them, but why? take away like those bones have always been there so why do we need to take some of them? but i was taking the advice that they were giving me and i, and I did that and started they the surgeon said you'll be back running in 16 weeks um got to 16 weeks and i clearly wasn't running but he wiped his hands with me. i never heard of him again um and then i worked started working with physios again and then i was on good old social media facebook and i came across you and I, you just understand it. You just get it. So is that yeah? Probably <laughs> too much then, but yeah. <laughs> no, 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 that's perfect. That's perfect. Um, uh, what was I gonna say? Every time you say pubic drilling, though, I like I just shudder inside. Like like a tiny pubic <laughs> just shudders inside uh, <laughs> the, at the uh, idea of it. I think it's the yeah. combination of the word of pubic and drilling is just a man's worst nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, that yeah, they. To, they drilled the bones to try and make them bleed to make them heal. That's what they said. But I, it definitely created more pain for me because obviously it created more instability because I had less bone there, I guess. So yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, okay, so you go through this like incredible journey, um, and you find some weirdo on the internet who supposedly specialises in it. Um, what's your what goes through your head in that in that moment where you're like, is like you know you're reading this stuff online, you're you're reading about me like what goes through your head in as you first kind of initially come across all this stuff um the i thought hey i've got to try something different um because what would happen here was i'd start a treatment with somebody else and and i'd come home and i'd speak to my husband and i'd say oh i think I've, i'm on a winner here i think i've got something that's going to help me you know and i'd go in real positive and then i'd end up in more pain and it wouldn't work and so 
um, like that first 20 minute session that you did with me, it was 20 minutes, but we did an hour, I think, straight off the bat, the one that you say, where it's free, first free 20 minute consultation. And I, I got off, I got off that session and I said to Leon, this is different. I know it's different because he's not even going, like obviously you haven't, like you said, you haven't touched my body to treat it, but you got me to do movements and straight away you knew exactly what I, what my body would do that were the faults and no, no one had ever tackled it that way. So you're, it's just your understanding of motor mechanics that you just explain things so well that you say this is, like it's not just do the exercise and then you do the exercise like if I was with somebody else do this exercise and then you don't understand why you're doing this exercise and why you need to persevere with it whereas you teach the, the the theory behind it why we need to do it how to do it like and, and you've already preempted all the mistakes we're going to make with that exercise before we've even tried it and that's that's what's different because you're you understand it you get it <laughs> That's really nice to say. Other people would describe that as just being mean, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Try this exercise. You're going to make this, this, and this mistake, so just don't stress about it. I already know you're going to fail. It's fine. Yeah. 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 But then it just makes us more to not fail, but then we do it anyway. But yeah. then you show us how to fix it and what we're going to do wrong with it. So, yeah. Something, something that I always try and like have an aim, like with my like, you know, ridiculously giant spreadsheet, is, is I feel like if I've already made a video to a question or to a problem you've already had, then when you as a client scroll down and look at that, it just makes you go, oh, this is all on track. So even though I've made a mistake and yes. I hurt myself, or I, you know, I, I've, I've tried to do this exercise and I can't feel it in the right area. Oh, this is how it's supposed to be. Because why else would there be a video to describe this exact same problem that I'm having if it wasn't meant to go this way kind of thing? Yep. Um, and it's almost like I always seem to like I play this game with myself where I get really disappointed if I don't have a video to deal with something before it happens. Um, yep. Because it's just kind of like me going, to me, like you deal with a condition like this and especially like someone like yourself who's had it for eight years, you get... So every time you do something positive with the, with a patient, right? Like you take away their pain, you you help them, you explain something to them, you build up some positive emotional like bank account, right? And then every time something goes wrong, you get like it's like a negative, it's like a withdrawal, and it's like yeah. so the more positive things you can push together, the more times they something goes like you know they do an exercise, they feel it right. The more times they're like, oh yeah, I, I did an exercise, I, I did a movement I couldn't do three days ago because I'm a bit stronger. You get that bank, and then. Every time something goes wrong, it's like, how much of that are you going to withdraw? So if there's like, yeah. it's like there's a video there, and then I can explain exactly what's happening, and and I can calm you down, then it's not as big an emotional disturbance, and it's like your spirit stays that little bit higher, and it's kind of yeah. like I I don't ever think I'd I'd be able to get to a point where I could stop the bad things from happening. Like I can do my best, but it'll always something will always go wrong. But like you can just minimize the damage and amplify the good stuff people generally can stay in a positive enough place to fix themselves. Um, and yeah, it's funny when you describe it like that, because yeah, it's always this endless game of like trying to chase, chase like chase a dog that you'll never catch kind of thing, trying to stay ahead of all the problems. Um, but it's kind of like, yeah, I think if, if I can do that, then people get better because they just always stay emotionally high and they don't get into the doldrums as badly as they would if that stuff didn't exist. I guess that's my, my kind of thing behind it as well. It, yeah, like it's, Osteoarthritis pubis is the most emotional roller coaster. Besides parenting, that's an emotional roller coaster too. But that you know, you think you're doing good, you think your body's coming good, and then it hurts one day. And like you said to me, like one one thing that I always say to myself is when I when I do get a bit of pain, is that you said you've tried not moving and you've tried resting, and that doesn't work. So we've worked, we've tried that for years, and it didn't work. So movement is how you're going to improve it and that's what every time it hurts like so obviously i don't get the pain anywhere near as much as i did but if i feel a bit of pain i go well it means i've just got to get stronger so if i if i do what my, my old self is is to rest and and it, like rest it then it's just going to get more sore because those muscles are going to get weaker so if i keep moving then yeah it's only going to help and so that that like you said the, the highs and lows the emotional roller coaster it like your pain receptors and your movement receptors. I feel it like my movement receptors are my positive vibes and my negative vibes are my pain receptors. So, yeah. Um, 
Absolutely. That's that's kind of a good segue as well then. Okay, so tell people about some of the, the I guess, difficult experiences you went through, some of the moments where you were struggling and, and you kind of had to really pull yourself up to kind of to kind of get through it. Uh, talk, talk a little bit about that. And what in, and in my session with you or just in osteitis pubis in general? Um, just in the process of, of kind of recovering and, and getting stronger and getting better, like moments where things were going good and then you dropped, um, if any stick out in your mind. Yeah, so... Um, uh, for me, like you said, is that um, the weight's doing those ones. So when when my body wouldn't move the way that you want me to get it to move, I automatically wanted to shut down and stop um, or not do that exercise because I wasn't good at it straight away. So, but I knew that that's like like you said, the motor mechanics that have been building and getting the injury for a long time. It's just so I needed to get over that and and do it, but. The turning point for me with my sessions with you is where it all came together was when we started doing um, the things that I enjoy, so the things that make me sweat and, and get the heart rate going, so the jumping um, movements, the moving side to side, and I was like, I, I every session I've had with you, I walk out positively than like what I started or, or and I at, it just, I don't know, I just get excited because I go, okay, I'm, get, I'm getting better, and each session I can see... But so when, when you say when the the, the bad points were was um, when we were doing deadlifts and I I had a mini freak out because I got pain on my right hand side and I've only ever had pain on my left hand side and um, I I freaked that I was creating osteitis pubis on the opposite side of my body so that that was probably the low but that's where you 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 just explained to me that I needed to. Like, I think that you're hurting part of your body. Your body's just trying to adjust to find a new way because you're teaching a new movement that it hasn't done. And that, that probably, like, that was a low point for me. Um, but it wasn't a very long one. Like, it was pretty quick turnaround. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think something that's kind of really important for people who are watching this to kind of understand is, like, so people want to focus on, like, the physical damages in their body as a way of measuring how bad is my OP, how bad is my case, how bad are my movement patterns. And it's kind of all these external things that, say, someone can watch from the outside in terms of how bad you are and what's not working um, versus kind of like, who are you as a person and, and how do you go when something goes wrong and, and how do you dig yourself out of it? And Are you wanting someone to fix this for you or are you going to fix yourself? Um, yeah. And what's really, really funny is that the most determining factor is never the physical condition. It's never whether you've done a lot of exercise in your life or if you haven't or if you're you know, physically gifted or you haven't. It's always just the personality. Um, and, you know, part of that's on me to try and find the right way to keep people motivated and focused and positive. Um, but at the end of the day, it's kind of like going, all right, cool. Something scary happened. I got pain on the opposite side of my body. And then kind of being able to go, okay, let me put this and keep this in perspective. Let me like, you know, hear what, what I was saying and kind of go, yep, that makes sense to me. I'm going to use my logical part of my brain to override the emotional part that's freaking out. Like that logically makes sense why I'm getting that pain. I logically understand how pain works because I understand the movement receptors and the pain receptors. So even though I emotionally, I'm going to like, you know, really worried about this, I'm, I'm going to like, you know, take the, my experience that I've been getting better, combine that with the information that I have and use that to stay focused. Um, and like that's such an individual trait to who you are and it's an individual trait that people can kind of bring in that it's kind of hard because it's what makes I always think it's like you know you didn't fix OP you survived it right like you're a survivor of OP kind of thing. yeah that's right yeah like it never goes away right. you just learn how to look Control after it. it yeah and it's funny because I think it changes people people who get better have to go through this process of kind of going it doesn't matter that I'm hurting like at the end of the day, no one cares. Like no one cares, like people care, like we all care, but we don't, at the end of the day, none of us can make it better for you, right? And it's like no. getting to that point where you're like, all right, I just have to like, you know, I, 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 it's hurting, I gotta acknowledge that it's hurting, but I gotta work around it, I gotta work with it, I gotta figure out the solution, because at the end of the day, no one's gonna magically make it better for me, right? And that it's such an individual trait that has to be developed along the way, that I think is more important than any of the other stuff, kind of thing. Yeah. You speak about in early video sessions, and it might have been one of the first ones that I watched, is that you need, like, no one's going to make your osteitis pubis better, you are. And it, so it made me go, holy shit, like, I've got to fix this myself, so I have to, like, and, and you do teach it, like, 
whilst I have to do it and make myself better, you've you're giving us knowledge and the exercises to do that ourselves, but you're holding us accountable for fixing ourselves. So like I, you say it, if you don't go and do the sessions, you don't do your exercises, you're not going to get better on you. So the more we do it and the more videos you show and do it, then, yeah, that's how you... And, and I, I, I held back on that, so that probably was a turning point for me as well, that I, um, I was holding back on... I, I didn't want to see myself on video. I didn't want to see myself doing those sessions, but I had to get over that pretty quickly because I, until I can see... Obviously, you think you're doing an exercise correctly, but then you see yourself on video and then you see that you, you're not doing it correctly. So, And the other one that I, if I was to give anyone a tip to do is to do your... Like when you go and do... So, you know, we do our session with you, you record it. Then when I, I play that back and I do my exercises to that sessions because I, I kind of mirror myself and go, okay, this is funny because if I haven't watched it for a week or two, because you've given me the knowledge, I watch my video, I can already pick what I'm going to do wrong and then you say, no, you did this wrong and I go, that's right, I did. And I was like, now I'm learning. So you've given me the tools to recognise that as well. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, that's probably a good place to kind of finish up on. Um, what what other advice would you, you kind of give people who are kind of starting this process or, or thinking about starting this process and, and the stuff that let you be successful in doing it and, and get through it? Okay. So the first tip I'd say is, um, so when when I was riding the wave of the exercises, so, you know, I was doing, it was, we are in our first, I don't know, I don't even know how many sessions we did, but the first few sessions and I was like really positive and then I went down really low and I thought, oh, I've got to, I'm committing to this, I've got to keep doing it. And it, like, it wasn't, it would have been like a, one of the last five, sessions of like stage night one of the st later stages that I then it all came together and I could see how it all worked so if I was to say to people you've got to give it a good chance um to let it to work to to see all the motor mechanics like the fun bit the bit I enjoyed I had to wait till the end to do it but I couldn't have got to that until I'd done all the stuff at the start so if I was to tell someone because I've seen people say online you know um oh, I've done three sessions um I, it's it's going well, but I don't know. My body's starting to get sore or I, I, I don't see it. And I'm just like, you've just got to stick it out because it all comes together in the end. You've just got to have faith in the process that you've treated treated, I love, treated me and it's been eight years. Not you haven't treated me for eight years. It's like, it hasn't been that long for me. But, um, like, you've got people that have had the injury for long term. People just need to trust the process is what I'd say. Awesome, awesome. Um, well, thank you so, so much for doing this. Um, and anyone who's watching this, like, you might have a really extreme case, you might have a really simple case. Um, um, but at the end of the day, like, it's just really that ability to just kind of knuckle down and kind of believe in yourself that really allows you to get better. And that, like, the medical profession and all of us who work in it um, can kind of put this situation where we have the information which makes us seem like the experts, which we are in a way. But at the end of the day, like, our job is to make you good at what you do so you can control your body and you don't have to be an expert of OP but you do have to be an expert at your body and um, and when you when you kind of hit that point that's generally where you can get better where you're like I know and understand my body enough to know why I'm in pain so I know what to do to get better that's generally how you get better at any physical condition whether it's OP or lower back pain whatever it is but um thank you so much Lana no problem my pleasure and thank you that was awesome